Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about prayer. Now, we're always trying to give you guys timely information and important information on our channel. We know you have limited time, and when you use some of your time to come over and view one of our videos over here at Hermes Academy, we want it to be beneficial to you. We want it to help you be practical information that you can use in your life. Now, if you have any ideas on some of the topics we can talk about, feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you have done so in the past, you may have realized we will make an entire video out of your comment if it is something that can help others. So if it is something you want to know, some biblical information you want to find out, put it down there in the comment section. We'll be glad to answer any question you have by way of a reply or we may turn it into an entire video. Now in this video I want to talk about Solomon's prayer particularly an element of Solomon's prayer that you may not ever have heard of. I know I haven't heard it anywhere else except the scripture itself. I haven't heard it in a church sermon on a YouTube video in a internet article or anywhere else for that matter I haven't heard anybody talk on what we are about to talk about in this particular video alright now before we get into it I want to give you a bit of background about what's called the prayer of Solomon or Solomon's temple prayer I'm looking over here at Google and it says that it is a prayer by King Solomon described in 1st Kings chapter 8 verses 22 through 52 and 2nd Chronicles chapter 6 verses 12 through 42. Now I have taken the time to look up both of these passages in the scripture from 2nd Chronicles and 1st Kings but we're only going to talk really about the one over there in 1st Kings as the wording is a little bit different and the particular words that I want to talk about I think are mentioned more in 1st Kings than in 2nd Chronicles so we'll just go with that one it says this prayer is said to have occurred at the dedication of the Temple of Solomon which also became known as the first temple so this would be Solomon's dedication prayer toward the temple the wording and thinking of the prayer have much in common with the language of Deuteronomy so let's jump over there and look at the prayer coming from first Kings chapter 8 now it looks like about 30 verses here and I don't want to talk about all of these verses there's really only one particular element of this prayer that I want to bring out to you guys and you may have caught a hint about it already and that's how it's talking about praying towards the temple now we've heard about people praying to the east before I don't know about you but I've never heard a reason why people would pray to the east the answer I believe is over here in King Solomon's temple dedication prayer without reading all of the verses here basically what it's saying is is that our prayers have more power when we turn towards the temple in other words when we pray to the east you see it talked about here time after time when it says toward this house towards the place which thou hast said my name shall be there that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make towards this place so does this mean that our prayers have more power if we were to face the east when we pray now I am a Bible believer anything written in the scripture I believe it 100% call me names if you want pick on me call me confused if you want but if I see it written in the Bible I believe it no doubt 100 percent 
There's really only two things in the world that I have teetotal faith in, and that is the scripture and mathematics. So when I see it here saying that my prayers will be answered if I face the East, you best believe when I am in a time when I need my prayers answered, I will try to remember to face the east when I'm saying that prayer. Now, I know there are going to be some doubters out there. People that will say the father doesn't need us to turn to the east and all of that. And that may be true. But as an old engineer with knowledge of experimentation, I say try it. What could it hurt? We're approaching some trebulous times these days, as we can see. And many of us recognize that prayer is our primary weapon. Well, of course, we want this weapon as accurate and precise as it can be. So, of course, we'll try it. If it is true, and I believe it is. It would be an extremely important advantage to have during the most trebulous times of the apocalypse. And just so it sinks in a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and play the audio portion of this chapter. And let you hear how it rings out in your mind and in your spirit when he's talking about praying to the east. Let's listen to Solomon's temple dedication prayer by way of the dramatized version of the King James Bible. And then we will continue the class. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart, who hast kept with thy servant David my father that thou promisedst him. Thou spakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand, as it is this day. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father that thou promisedst him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me, as thou hast walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou spakest unto thy servant David my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have builded. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant, and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today, that thine eyes may be opened toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant, and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place. And hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. If any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and do, and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head, and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name, and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk, and give rain upon thy land which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar, 
if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man, or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward this house, then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men, that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning a stranger, that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake, for they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm. When he shall come and pray toward this house, Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, to fear thee, as do thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house, which I have builded, is called by thy name. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house that I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer, and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carry them captives, saying, We have sinned, and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart, and with all their soul in the land of their enemies which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they be thy people, and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt, from the midst of the furnace of iron that thine eyes may be open under the supplication of thy servant, and under the supplication of thy people Israel, to hearken unto them in all that they call for unto thee. For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth, to be thine inheritance, as thou spakest by the hand of Moses thy servant, when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. And it was so, that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer... Now how powerful is that? See, this is the difference between the 144,000 and the rest of humanity, including the multitude that no man can number. They may be included in this as well, is they will understand these little known elements found only in the scripture and use them to at their advantage. I hope you understand the magnitude of what you're hearing here. He is definitely talking about turning and praying towards Jerusalem. He's saying that if any man turn toward the east and pray, they shall be heard in heaven and they shall be forgiven of their sins and transgressions, trespasses, oaths and swearings. So is this a quick and easy way to get our sins forgiven? I mean, we should be praying for our sins to be forgiven anyway. Well, maybe we should consider turning towards Jerusalem when we say that prayer. Doing so, we see right here in verse 32, he says, Then hear thou in heaven, and do, and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way unto his head, and justifying the righteous. To give him according to his righteousness. Now let's remember there are no idle words in the Bible. All scripture is for our edification. So it wouldn't be in here unless our father wanted us to know this and even practice this. And you see right there in verse 33 how needed this type of advantage is. 
It says, when thy people Israel be smitten down before thy enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name, and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again into the land which thou givest unto their fathers. New Jerusalem is what this is talking about. Now, I do realize that the third temple will be built on the hearts of humanity. So, my question for you, you can answer it down in the comment section. How are we to turn towards this place that's being talked about in these passages when the third temple is built on our hearts? Do we still turn towards Jerusalem? I can't say I know for sure, so... Tell me what you think down in the comment section. Because you see right there in verse 35, he says, When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee, if they pray towards this place and confess thy name and turn their hearts from their sin when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and for thy people Israel. You look right there in verse 37, he's pretty much talking about the tribulation. Famine, pestilence, blasting, mildew, locusts, the caterpillar, besieges by the enemy, plagues, sicknesses. These are the tribulations that are about to overwhelm the world. Look right there in verse 38. It's talking about spreading forth your hands towards this house. Now that is an important way to pray. I've always wondered where that clasped hands came from when we pray. Who made that up? Nobody ever did that in the Bible. Putting your hands together. It seems like when they prayed in the Bible they had outstretched hands. And I guess after Solomon's time those hands were spread forth towards Jerusalem if I remember correctly that's the way Daniel prayed turning towards Jerusalem look right there verse 44 he says if thy people go out to battle against their enemy whether whatsoever thou shalt send them and shall pray unto the Lord towards the city which thou hast chosen towards the house that I have built for thy name then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. The 144,000 no doubt will be praying towards Jerusalem with their hands stretched forth in that direction. Not only the 144,000 but also that multitude that no man can number. We are prayer warriors as well. So let's learn to pray in this manner. Now notice that it doesn't say we have to be in the city. We just have to turn towards the city. We could be anywhere from North Korea to California. We just need to know in which direction is Jerusalem. Now notice down here in verse 47. It's talking about the scattering of our people. It says, Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captive, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. Now this is important because it's talking about repentance. We have to understand that we have done those things that are talking about here. We can't be like Adam and Eve trying to hide from our father. We can't do that. He can see us and he knows where we are at all times. So we have to be willing to admit that we have done perversely, that we have committed wickedness. And we have to make this confession. And according to what we're reading here, we do so with outstretched hands towards Jerusalem and we will be forgiven of that transgression. Verse 48 says, And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all of their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, 
which thou givest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name? Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. This is talking about us. We need to be doing this. We all have sinned against our father, broken his commandments and such, transgressed his laws, which is the definition of sin, the transgression of the law. He's saying if we do this, then we shall get compassion from those who took us captive in the first place. So maybe instead of protesting, we should be praying towards the east or towards Jerusalem. So I just wanted to share this information with you guys. Like I said, I've never heard anybody else talk about this. But that don't make it less important. If you think about it, there's only 144,000 out of 7 point something billion people on the planet. That's about 1 in 53,000 people that would have this kind of information. So, if you appreciate this information, go ahead and hit the like button and consider sharing. Remember to give your opinion on the question we asked in the comment section or leave any comment that you have. Comments go a long way to help small channels like ours. Hit that subscribe button and or that bell notification button if you like biblical truths like this. We're always putting out little known biblical information on our channel, including the Third Testament of the Bible, which you could find a link to in the description of this video. And may our Father bless you and keep you. May our Father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace.